Chapter 26 Firestar slept fitfully and woke at dawn to find that clouds had covered the sky. A stiff breeze was blowing and a few leaves whirled down from the bushes on the cliff top. Leaf fall could not be far away. Giving himself a quick grooming, he tried to forget his fears from the night before. The meaning of Skywatcher's prophecy was hidden in the moons to come. He could do nothing about it now. Clovertail and her kits had finally settled in the nursery, leaving room for the new Sky Clan warriors to share the big cave with Firestar and Sandstorm. Restless to be doing something, Firestar padded across the cave and prodded Sharpclaw with one paw. Wah! Sharpclaw raised his head, blinking. Time for a dawn patrol. Firestar announced. Sharpclaw groaned, then hauled himself out of his nest and shook scraps of moss and fern from his pelt, while Firestar roused Leaf Dapple. We'll fetch Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw and patrol the borders, he explained. Leaf Dapple looked puzzled. We haven't got any borders. We're going to set some. He led the way down the trail to the cave they had chosen for the apprentice's den wondering how Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw had coped with their first night away from their two legs. He remembered settling them in the night before, helping them to carry moss up from the cave beside the river and arrange it into comfortable nests. Sparrow Paw's eyes had grown wide with anxiety as the sun set and night crept into the gorge. I wonder how our house folk are feeling, he muttered. Cherry Paw gave him a comforting lick. They'll be okay. And so will we. We're clan cats now. But Firestar had noticed the tip of her tail twitching and knew she wasn't as confident as she pretended. When he and the other warriors arrived outside their cave that morning, Cherry Paw shot outside, her fur sticking all over the place. Are we going hunting? She demanded. I'm starving. Elders and nursing queens eat first, Sharpclaw reminded her with a glance at Firestar. That's right, but Sandstorm will lead a hunting patrol later on for the rest of the clan, Firestar mewed. We're the dawn patrol, and we can pick up some prey on the way. Are we allowed to do that? Cherry Paw asked. Sure, Firestar replied. It's only hunting patrols who have to bring their fresh kill back for the clan. Good, Sparrow Paw poked his head out of the den behind his sister. Let's get going. Firestar led the way up the gorge past the path that led to Skywatcher's den, as far as the rocks where they had saved Clovertail and her kits from the fox. He wondered if the first Sky Clan warriors had set their boundaries anywhere nearby. He guessed they would have marked out a bigger territory than the new Sky Clan needed now, with fewer mouths to feed and fewer warriors to guard the borders. We'll set the first scent markers here, he explained. Then any cat who comes along will know that this is our territory. If you keep renewing the marks, then over a few moons, a really strong scent builds up. A shiver went through him from ears to tail tip. When he first came to the forest, the borders of ThunderClan had been settled for more seasons than any cat could remember. The decisions he made now would affect Sky Clan for seasons to come. Do other cats respect the boundaries? Leaf Dapple asked. It was a good question, Firestar thought. Cats from other clans would think twice before crossing border markers, but there were no other clans in this remote place. You might have trouble from rogues, he began. We'll soon teach them to stay out of our territory, Sharpclaw interrupted, flexing his claws. Or get them to join us, Leaf Dapple suggested quietly. We were rogues ourselves not so long ago. When the first markers were set, Firestar found a trail that led up to the cliff top on the side opposite the camp. The cats headed downstream again along the top of the gorge. Here's a good place for another scent marker, Firestar meowed, pointing with his tail toward a boulder that broke through the thin soil a couple of tail lengths from the cliff edge. It's always a good idea to have a marker you can see as well as scent. That way it's easier to remember where they are. Can I do it, please? Cherry Paul bounced up to the rock. Okay, you saw what I did back there. Catch up when you've finished. While Cherry Paul set the marker, 
Firestar led the other cats farther along the cliff until they came in sight of the woodland where he had spoken to the rogues. Cherry Paw came bounding up as they paused for Sparrow Paw to set another marker at a spot where the cliff edge crumbled away. I want to include some of the woods in the territory, Firestar meowed. It's the best place for prey. But I don't want to tread on the tails of the rogues who didn't join us. We're not looking for a fight. Leaf Dapple nodded. If we stay on good terms with them, some of them might change their minds. Firestar let Sharpclaw take the lead as they reached the trees. The two apprentices had never been in thick woodland before. Their eyes stretched wide, and Cherry Paw let out an excited squeal before slapping her tail over her mouth with a guilty look at Sharpclaw. That's right, frighten all the prey in the forest, Sharpclaw grumbled. Firestar glanced at the ginger warrior, hoping he wasn't going to be too tough with an apprentice who was less experienced than a clan cat of her age. But Cherry Paw didn't seem crushed. She had already spotted a blackbird pecking underneath a bush and had started to creep up on it. Leaf Dapple waved her tail at Sparrow Paw. You can hunt too if you like. Sparrow Paw's ears pricked and he stood tasting the air before stalking through long grass toward some prey Firestar couldn't see. I suggest we head for the stream, Sharpclaw meowed, keeping an eye on his apprentice. If we make that the border, rain firs and lichens dens will be outside our territory. What about Tangle? Firestar asked, remembering the cranky old tabby. Leaf Dapple let out a faint mrow of amusement. Tangle shifts his den every moon. If he doesn't like being inside our territory, he can move outside it. Firestar nodded. Sharpclaw's idea was a good one, but he reminded himself to tell the warriors not to attack rogues if they found them on SkyClan territory, at least not until they had been given plenty of time to get used to the idea of the clan's presence in the woods. The stream it is, then, he meowed. Just then, Cherry Paw gave an enormous leap and snatched the blackbird out of the air as it tried to fly off. Crashing to the ground again, she trotted back with her prey in her jaws and laid it at Sharpclaw's paws. For you, she mewed, dipping her head respectfully. I can soon catch another. Sharpclaw stared at her and at the fresh kill. Thanks, he managed to say. Good catch. Her eyes gleaming. Cherry Paw padded off again with her tail in the air. Not to be outdone, Sparrow Paw brought his first catch, a mouse, to Leaf Dapple, before going off to hunt for his own fresh kill. Firestar was pleased to see them trying to act like proper clan cats, and decided not to tell them that apprentices didn't usually catch prey for their mentors. He caught a squirrel for himself with a leap that was nearly good enough for Sky Clan. When they had finished eating, Sharpclaw led the way to the stream. Before they reached it, Cherry Paw waved her tail excitedly at a dead tree that stood by itself in a clearing. That's a good place for a marker, Firestar halted. It's okay, but I think this one would be better. He nodded at an ivy-covered oak tree on the nearer edge of the clearing. Why? Sparrow Paw asked. We'd have more territory if we used the dead tree. Yes, but there's no cover in the clearing. Firestar explained. A tingle of excitement went through him. Were these the sort of decisions that ThunderClan warriors had made in the forest so long ago? No cover for prey, and none for you, if there are foxes or badgers about. That makes sense, Sharpclaw padded up to the oak tree and set a marker there. Following the stream, the cats reached the cliff top and climbed down to where the fallen tree trunk crossed the river. Firestar took the lead once more, over to the far side of the gorge and up the cliff toward the two-leg place, setting scent by the tree stump and the deserted fox's den that Skywatcher had told him marked the old border. Then the patrol skirted the edge of the two-leg place as far as the barn at the end of the row. Firestar felt his fur begin to prick again as they approached it. He didn't like the place and never would, but at least now it was outside the Sky Clan borders. Finally, he led his patrol back toward the camp by a route that took in most of the undergrowth on the cliff top. He guessed it was almost sun high, though clouds still covered the sky and the wind was scented with rain. As the patrol approached the bushes, 
Sandstorm emerged with a mouse between her jaws. Hi, she mewed, dropping her prey. I thought you must have gone on patrol. We set the borders, Cherry Paw announced proudly. Good, Sandstorm twitched her whiskers with approval. You'll have to tell the rest of us where they are. Over the next few days, every cat can do the patrol, Firestar meowed. I see you've been hunting, he added, flicking his tail toward the mouse. Yes, there's plenty of prey about, Sandstorm replied. Patchfoot is a good hunter already, and Short Whisker is coming on really well. Firestar was glad to hear that. A few successes would give the former kitty pet some much needed confidence. There's just one thing that's worrying me, Sandstorm went on in a lower voice meant for Firestar alone. There's been no sign of Skywatcher this morning. Apprehension clawed deep in Firestar's belly. Mention of Skywatcher reminded him of the old cat's strange mood the night before and the ominous words of his prophecy. I think you should check on him, Sandstorm prompted. He should be here in the camp, not stuck out there in that excuse for a den. I'll go right away, Firestar meowed. He picked his way down the stony trail and headed up the gorge. Remembering what Sandstorm had said about the fox, he kept all his senses alert. Skywatcher was a noble old cat, but he would be no match for a strong and determined predator. However, there was no trace of fox scent. By the time he reached the path behind the boulder, a thin drizzle had begun to fall, penetrating his fur with chill claws. As he approached the den, he couldn't see anything of the old warrior. Maybe he's out hunting. Drawing closer, he spotted gray fur half concealed behind the roots of the thorn tree. Skywatcher, he called. There was no reply. When he stood at the mouth of the den, he could see the old cat curled up at the very back, pressed against the earth wall with a tangle of roots over his head. Skywatcher, Firestar repeated. The gray warrior did not move. Firestar drew in his breath with sudden understanding. As he ducked his head to enter the den and took the couple of paw steps that brought him to Skywatcher's side. The old cat was still, and when Firestar gently laid a paw on his shoulder, he felt cold. Somehow he looked smaller than he had when he was alive. Grief clawed at Firestar's heart. Perhaps the old cat had clung to life only until he could see Sky Clan restored. Firestar hoped he had died happy, knowing that his dreams had been fulfilled. Goodbye, my friend. His voice choked in his throat as he stroked his tail over the old warrior's head. May Star Clan light your path. Firestar jumped to the top of the rock pile and gazed down at the cats of Sky Clan. Clovertail was stretched out by the stream with her kits frisking around her, while Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw were eating beside the fresh kill pile. Sharp Claw and Patchfoot were wrestling together at the foot of the cliff in a practice fight. Sandstorm sat watching them nearby, offering some comments on their technique. Firestar's heart was heavy with the news he had to tell them. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the rock pile for a clan meeting, he yelled. Sharp Claw and Patchfoot broke apart and sat up with ears pricked. The two apprentices swallowed their fresh kill and looked up, their eyes bright with curiosity. Leafed Apple began to pick her way down from the clifftop, joining Short Whisker as he emerged from the warrior's den. I have some bad news to tell you, Firestar meowed when all the clan had gathered. Skywatcher is dead. For a moment there was silence, except for the happy squealing of Clovertail's kits as they played beside their mother. Clovertail swept them closer to her with her tail. Hush, she mewed. Firestar's telling us something very sad. It is bad news, Sharpclaw agreed, flexing his claws against the rock. The clan will be weaker without his experience to guide us. Firestar's tail twitched. Grief for the old cat swept over him again as he saw that most of the clan cats were giving one another blank looks. 
he could see that few of them felt any real sense of loss. Sandstorm came to meet him as he bounded down the rock pile again and pushed her nose into his shoulder fur. You can't blame them, she murmured. They hardly knew Skywatcher and had only just realized he wasn't a mad old nuisance. I know, Firestar sighed. But they need to understand how much he did for this clan. He asked Patchfoot to help him and Sandstorm bring the old cat's body back to camp for his burial. The rest of the clan gathered around as they laid him gently at the foot of the rock pile. Now remember, you have to stay up all night tonight, Clovertail told her kits, keeping the inquisitive little creatures back with her tail. You mustn't go to sleep, whatever happens. No, that's all right, Firestar meowed, surprised that the former loner had heard about the custom of keeping vigil. Kits don't need to stay awake. Clovertail stared at him, her eyes wide with alarm and her neck fur bristling. Do you want my kids to die? She screeched. What? Firestar was baffled. Your kids aren't in any danger. Short Whiskers shivered. No, Clovertail's right. You have to stay awake the night a cat dies. Otherwise, you die too. My mother told me that. It's true, Sharp Claw meowed. Remember Foxy? He went to sleep the night his brother died, and a couple of days later, a monster got him. Yes, I remember that, Leaf Dapple put in. But it's not true, Firestar spoke firmly, seeing that the former kitty pets were giving one another anxious glances. He'd talk to the rogues later about this intriguing superstition that must have sprung from clan traditions, even though the clan itself had been forgotten. We stay awake, yes but only to honor the fallen cat on its journey to Star Clan. It doesn't have anything to do with believing that we'll die if we don't. Not every cat sits vigil for the whole of the night, Sandstorm went on. Just those who were closest to the dead cat. But tonight I think the whole clan should do it, because there aren't many of us. We're his kin, aren't we? Sparrowpaw asked. Those of us with Sky Clan blood? Firestar dipped his head. Yes, you are. We'll all keep watch, and in the morning we'll bury him. It's usually the elders who do that, but Sandstorm and I will do it for Skywatcher. I'd like to help, Cherry Paul mewed. The young tortoise shell looked unusually subdued. We never told him we were sorry for calling him names. I wish we had, Sparrow Paul added miserably. Sandstorm touched his ear with her nose. I think he knew. He saw you become clan apprentices, and that's what he wanted most of all, to see his clan being made strong again. As the sun went down and shadows filled the gorge, the clan gathered for Skywatcher's vigil. Firestar and Sandstorm crouched closest to him, pushing their noses into his cold gray fur. Cherrypaw and Sparrowpaw sat a little way away with the rest of the clan. Clovertail hesitated, but settled down at the foot of the cliff with her kits snuggled into her fur, as if they were going to sleep as usual. Short Whisker looked most anxious, and Firestar wondered if he had deliberately sat down on a sharp-edged stone in order to keep him from dozing off. The last daylight faded from the sky. The clouds had cleared away, and the warriors of Star Clan began to appear overhead. After a while, Firestar realized that the clan were becoming restless. He could hear shifting and muttering behind him. Cherry Paul let out a huge yawn and her eyes closed. She jerked awake again as Sparrow Paul prodded her in the side. Then Firestar heard Clovertail's voice whispering in his ear. I'm sorry, Firestar. It's getting cold. And if you're sure it's safe to go to sleep, I'd like to take my kids back to the cave. That's fine, he murmured. As she withdrew, he heard another cat rise and follow her up the stony trail. Glancing around, he saw that it was Sharp Claw. Short Whisker and Patchfoot were mewing quietly to each other. After a few heartbeats, Short Whisker moved away, but only to sit by himself on a rock a few fox lengths farther down the stream. Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw, for all their good intentions, had fallen asleep. Only Leaf Dapple remained 
her gaze fixed on the stars. Firestar suppressed a sigh. These cats didn't understand properly what it meant to live the life of a warrior and to follow the warrior code. They would need to learn the importance of the vigil, among so many other things, before they would truly be a clan. But at least they seemed to trust him when he said they wouldn't die if they fell asleep tonight. Perhaps it had been easier to stay awake when they were leading less orderly lives without dawn patrols and hunting patrols and cave duties to tire them out. Stretching stiff limbs, he gazed up at Silverpelt's frosty fire and wondered which of those glittering points of light was the spirit of Skywatcher. Have you found your way to Sky Clan's warrior ancestors? He hoped so. If any cat deserved to walk among the stars, it was Skywatcher. Moonlight shining through the cave entrance woke Firestar, and glancing around the den, he realized that Short Whisker wasn't there. Worried, he poked his head outside and spotted the tabby Tom sitting on the rock by the river, where he had gone three nights before when the clan kept vigil for Skywatcher. Firestar padded down to join him. As he approached, Short Whisker jumped, and a defensive look flickered in his eyes. Did you want me? He began. No, not for anything in particular. Firestar sprang up onto the rock beside him. But I get the feeling you're not happy. If there's anything wrong, you can tell me. Short Whisker edged to one side to make room for him. There's nothing wrong, he meowed. Everything's fine. I'm learning stuff I never imagined before. It's just, well, there are so many cats especially when we're all sleeping together in the den. I've been used to living on my own with my housefolk. I was a kitty pet too, you know, and I felt the same when I joined my clan. But you'll get used to it, Firestar told him. Soon you'll wonder how you ever managed to sleep without your clanmates around you. Maybe, Short Whisker meowed, though he didn't sound convinced. The tabby cat stared into the river, and Firestar got the sense that he wanted to be alone. He jumped down from the rock and returned to the den, wondering what he could do to make Short Whisker feel more comfortable with clan life. Perhaps pride in his hunting achievements would do the trick. A couple of days after his talk with Short Whisker, Firestar returned from a hunting patrol with Sparrowpaw and Leafdapple to find the camp almost deserted. The warrior's cave was empty, and when the patrol padded down to the riverside, the only cats they found were Clovertail and her kits. Come back, Bounce Kit, Clovertail called, wrapping her tail around the adventurous Ginger Kit and pulling him back from the edge of the water. Glancing at Firestar, she added, They're getting so strong and active, and if they get into trouble, you can be sure Bounce Kit is at the bottom of it. They're doing really well, Firestar told her. They'll soon be ready for mentors, and we're so short of warriors, he went on, that you might have to mentor one of them yourself. It's not ideal for apprentices to have their mother as a mentor, but Clovertail's eyes widened in dismay. I've no idea how to mentor an apprentice. Maybe it's time you started to join the patrols, Firestar suggested. I'm sure you'll learn quickly. Oh, I couldn't possibly, Clovertail exclaimed. My kids still need me. Who would keep an eye on them if I weren't here? Rock Kit, come down off there, she added, raising her voice to the black kid who had started to scramble up the rock pile. You'll fall into the water. Looking at the three mischievous kits, Firestar supposed she had a point. Where is every cat? He asked. The whole gorge seems deserted. They went with Sandstorm, Clovertail replied pointing up the gorge with her tail. She said she was taking them for a training session. With a glance at her kits to make sure they weren't misbehaving, she padded over to the newly stocked fresh kill pile and chose a mouse for herself. Firestar left her with sparrow paw and leaf dapple and padded up the gorge. A few tail lengths farther on, the cliff curved inward to leave a wide, flat space with a sandy floor. Firestar reached it in time to see Cherry Paw pounce on Sandstorm, 
The two she-cats rolled over and over in a fierce tangle of paws and tails. Sharp Claw, Short Whisker, and Patchfoot were looking on. At last, Sandstorm broke free and stood up, shaking sand from her pelt. Well done, she meowed. You've got that leap and claw action just right. If I were a fox, I wouldn't fancy meeting you. Cherry Paw's eyes glowed. Short Whisker, you have a go, Sandstorm went on. Pretend I'm a fox that's trying to get into the clan nursery. Short Whisker hesitated, glancing around at the other cats, while Sandstorm crouched, her tail tip flicking impatiently. Come on, she urged. I've had time to eat a couple of kits by now. Short Whisker hurled himself across the sandy space, his claws extended. But he had misjudged his leap. He fell short, just in front of Sandstorm, who cuffed him over the ears with both her front paws. Short Whisker let out a growl of frustration, his tail lashing. Don't worry, Sandstorm meowed. Try again. No, I've had enough for now, Short Whisker backed away. I'll practice on my own for a bit. For a heartbeat, Sandstorm gave him a questioning stare, then nodded. Okay, we'll have another session tomorrow. Short Whisker padded around a curve in the gorge and out of sight. Firestar exchanged a glance with Sandstorm and went after him. Before he caught up with Short Whisker, the tabby Tom realized that some cat was following him and stopped to wait. I'm sorry, he meowed, not giving Firestar a chance to speak first. I know I messed up, he blinked miserably. I'm never going to get it right. I just feel so awkward trying to train with all those other cats watching. Firestar suppressed a sigh. It was the same problem that Short Whisker had spoken about before, on the rock by the river. He was finding it hard to adjust to living among a large number of cats. Well, it's the same for every cat, he began. Short Whisker tried to interrupt, but Firestar flicked his tail for silence. I can understand how you feel. But for Star Clan's sake, why didn't you tell Sandstorm that? She's not unreasonable. She would give you a one-on-one -on -one session if you asked her. Short Whisker's forepaws shuffled on the sandy ground. I don't like to give her any trouble. She works so hard already. I know, but it's no trouble, honestly. I'll tell you what, Firestar went on. Would you like to practice with me now? No cat is watching us. Short Whisker's eyes brightened. Would you really? Of course. What move was Sandstorm trying to teach you? She showed us how to leap on top of our enemies. That way, she said, it's harder for them to get at you. True. Firestar lashed his tail. Okay, come and get me. He had hardly finished speaking when Short Whisker leaped at him, snarling. Firestar sidestepped. Short Whisker hit the ground beside him, but managed to rake his paws down Firestar's side before he could scramble out of range. Good, Firestar exclaimed. I missed you, though, Short Whisker mewed ruefully. Firestar gritted his teeth. Was this cat determined to see the bad side of everything? But you still got a blow in, he pointed out. Try again, and this time keep fighting until I tell you to stop. He crouched, waiting for Short Whisker's leap. For a moment, he relaxed as the tabby's gaze drifted to a butterfly fluttering past. The leap, when it came, took him by surprise. Sneaky, he grunted as Short Whisker landed on top of him, driving the breath from his body. He heard a snarl of satisfaction as Short Whisker gripped his shoulders with his paws and bit down into his neck fur. Rolling over onto his back, Firestar twisted his haunches, trying to land a blow on Short Whisker's belly with his hind paws. Short Whisker lost his grip, all four paws flailing wildly as he tried to claw Firestar again. Okay. That'll do, Firestar panted. Short Whisker scrambled to his paws. I didn't hurt you, did I? Firestar's flank was stinging, but he shook his head. That was great. You've got the makings of a really dangerous fighter. Short Whisker's eyes glowed with the praise. Really? Really. There's no need for you to feel ashamed in front of other cats. The tabby Tom shrugged. I'll get used to it sooner or later, I guess. He dipped his head to Firestar. I'll just practice the moves on my own for a bit, if that's okay. That's fine. 
Firestar padded back down the gorge to find that the training session was breaking up with the other cats heading toward the camp. Sandstorm was sitting in the middle of the training space, grooming sand out of her fur. I had to talk with Short Whisker, Firestar began, telling her what had happened. I'll make sure he gets the chance to train on his own, Sandstorm promised. She finished her grooming and stood up. I'm less worried about him than about Clovertail. She hasn't been to a single training session yet. She's still taking care of her kits. Sandstorm's whiskers twitched. Her kits are old enough to be left for a short while. They could come and watch for Star Clan's sake. Don't worry, Firestar brushed his tail against her shoulder. The kits will be apprenticed soon, and then Clovertail will see that she has to join in. Remember, she hasn't been a clan cat for long. Sandstorm sniffed. When she was made a warrior, she promised to protect and defend the clan. How does she expect to keep her promise if she never learns to fight? Give her time, Firestar urged. She doesn't understand what the promise means yet. One day she will. And the sooner the better, Sandstorm muttered. Together the two cats strolled back to camp. Without conscious decision, their paws led them to the top of the rock pile. Sandstorm lay down on one side, closing her eyes to slits as the sun beat down on her. Firestar sat beside her, looking down to where the river poured out. Patchfoot was sitting on a rock by the waterside, stretching down to lap. A couple of tail lengths away, Cherrypaw and Sparrowpaw were play fighting, while their mentors looked on and offered advice. Clovertail and her kits had crossed the river, and the kits were exploring the rocks near the water on that side. You know, this reminds me of sunning rocks, Sandstorm murmured. The warm rock, the sound of the river. I wonder what the others are doing back home. Graystripe will keep the clan safe, Firestar mewed. I trust him more than any cat. Homesickness flooded over him. Even though he believed Skywatcher's promise that ThunderClan was safe, he wanted to see his clan deputy and his best friend more than anything. Sandstorm stroked his shoulder gently with her tail tip. I wonder how Sorrowpaw is getting on with Dustpelt. She let out a soft mrow of amusement. I'd love to watch one of their training sessions. Firestar echoed her mrow. Let's hope Dustpelt survives. He broke off at the sound of a terrified shriek from below. Springing up, he saw Clovertail standing at the edge of the river, her fur fluffed out so that she looked twice her size. For a heartbeat, he couldn't locate the kits. Then he spotted Bounce Kit, struggling frantically as he was carried along in the surge of water as it flowed out of the cave. He scrabbled with his front paws, letting out a wail of terror that was cut off as his head went under. By then, Firestar was bounding down the rocks with Sandstorm hard on his paws, but Clovertail was faster. Before they reached the path on the other side of the cave, she had plunged into the river. She swam strongly to where her kit had vanished and dived down under the water. Terror stabbed through Firestar. Would he have to save the mother as well as her kit? Then Clovertail reappeared, gripping Bounce Kit firmly by the scruff. Dragging him with her, she reached the side of the pool, where Firestar and Sandstorm leaned over to take the kit, while Clovertail hauled herself onto dry ground. Bounce Kit, she exclaimed. Bounce Kit, are you all right? Shivering, Bounce Kit let out a feeble cry and vomited up a mouthful of water. His mother nudged him into a patch of sunlight, where he flopped down like a damp leaf. Clovertail crouched beside him and began licking him fiercely, ruffling his fur the wrong way to dry him out and get him warm again. Firestar looked around for the other two kits and spotted them edging their way nervously along the path that led underneath the rocks to the cave where the moss grew. Emerging from the cave, they pattered along the riverbank and halted in front of their mother, their eyes wide with fear. Will Bounce Kit be okay? Tiny Kit asked in a small voice. Clovertail looked up from her licking. Already Bounce Kit's fur was almost dry, and he was trying to sit up. I don't know what the three of you are thinking of, she hissed. You know very well you shouldn't have gone into that cave without me. But we knew you wouldn't let us, Rock Kit began. Of course I wouldn't let you, and now you can see why. She gave Bounce Kit a few more rough licks. 
Firestar could tell she was angry only because she had been so terrified. It's dangerous under there, and you're all too small to swim properly. What if I hadn't been here? Bounce Kit managed to scramble up and stood groggily on all four paws. It's my fault, he mewed. It was my idea. I don't care whose fault it was, Clovertail rose and shook herself. Drops of water spun away from her pelt, spattering Firestar and Sandstorm. You're all to go straight back to the nursery. No more play for any of you today. Rock Kate let out an indignant wail, then broke off as his mother glared at him. Go on, now, she ordered. Crestfallen, the kits turned away. Then Tiny Kit glanced back. There's a cave in there, full of shining moss, she mewed. And there were voices talking to us. Startled, Firestar stepped forward. What did they say? They were so quiet that we couldn't hear. Bounce Kit replied. Voices indeed, Clovertail scolded. Haven't you been naughty enough without making up stories? But we're not making it up, Tiny Kit protested, her white tail quivering. We did hear voices, lots of them. I don't want to hear any more about it, her mother meowed. You're never to go into that cave again, and that's the end of it. Snorting in annoyance, she began herding her kits back toward the rock pile. Firestar exchanged a glance with Sandstorm. Skywatcher had told them that the Sky Clan medicine cats had shared tongues with their ancestors in the cave where the river flowed out. Could the kits possibly have heard the voices of the Sky Clan warriors from so long ago? He and Sandstorm helped the three kits clamber over the rock pile, but when they had begun to climb the trail to the nursery, he held Clovertail back with his tail on her shoulder. Where did you learn to swim like that? Clovertail shrugged. I haven't always lived in the gorge, she explained. I was born farther down river, near an abandoned two-leg nest. My mother taught me to swim for fish. Firestar wondered if the two-leg nest was the one he and Sandstorm had passed on their journey. One of the clans in the forest where I live is called River Clan, he told Clovertail. They swim and catch fish all the time. I've never heard of any other cats who enjoy swimming until now. I wonder if you have River Clan ancestry. Clovertail's eyes widened. Does that mean I don't belong to Sky Clan? The dismay in her tone encouraged Firestar. It showed that at least Clovertail wanted to be a member of Sky Clan and had the seeds of loyalty to her clanmates and the warrior code. No, Sandstorm meowed, touching her nose to Clovertail's ear. You're a Sky Clan cat through and through, because that's where you've chosen to live. Cats can change clans, Firestar added, remembering how Brambleclaw's sister, Tawny Pelt, had followed their father, Tigerstar, into Shadow Clan. It doesn't happen often, and it doesn't always work, but being a member of a clan is about more than just blood. Even more, Sandstorm went on. You've proved that you have warrior blood in you. You owe it to your ancestors to learn their skills of hunting and fighting so that the warrior code can live on in you. Clovertail blinked. I promised that, didn't I, when I was made a warrior? I'm starting to understand now what the words mean. But I still don't think I'll be much use, not like you and Sharpclaw. You were very brave today, Firestar assured her. You saved Bounce Kit. You didn't need any other cat. Clovertail looked thoughtful. At last, she nodded. I never thought of it like that, she mewed. Okay, I will join in the training from now on. Good, Firestar rested his tail tip on her shoulder. You'll feel you really belong to the clan when you give something back to it. Think about your kids. They'll become warriors one day, and you could be a great example for them. We understand it's not easy, Sandstorm told the she-cat, giving her a friendly lick but I promise you, it's worth it. And you needn't worry about your kits, Firestar added. They'll be apprentices soon. And until then, we'll make sure some cat keeps an eye on them while you're training. No more expeditions into that cave. On the following morning, 
Firestar took Sharpclaw, Cherrypaw, and Patchfoot on the dawn patrol. When they returned, he saw Sparrowpaw, Shortwhisker, and Leafdapple huddled together at the foot of the rock pile, mewing urgently to one another. Sandstorm sat a tail length away, a disgusted expression on her face. Firestar glanced at Sharpclaw. What's all that about? The ginger tom shrugged. I've no idea. Firestar padded forward until he came up to the little group. Hi, is everything okay? The cats all turned worried faces toward him. We were talking about the Whispering Cave, Short Whisker told him. Firestar stared. The what? The cave under the rocks, Sandstorm got up, her eyes narrowed. That's what they're calling it now. Those silly kits have spread the story about the voices and- There must be something down there, Sparrowpaw interrupted. Rock Kit said he saw big shiny cats with huge claws. Their eyes glowed like the moon and their teeth were bigger than a fox's. Patchfoot looked horrified. Really? Kits will be kits, I know. Beef Dapple twitched her tail. But they looked terrified. Would they really make all that up? Hmm. Firestar could tell that the kits had improved their story since their visit to the cave the day before. Suppose these big cats come out, Short Whisker mewed. Sandstorm rolled her eyes. Suppose hedgehogs fly. If there is something in there, we ought to deal with it, Sharpclaw flexed his claws. We should go in and attack before they have a chance to attack us. Firestar lifted one paw to stall him. We will go in there but not until later on, and I don't believe there's anything to be afraid of. It's time for hunting patrols, he went on. Sharpclaw, you can lead one, and Leaf Dapple the other. The Sky Clan cats still gave him doubtful looks as they moved away. Sandstorm lagged behind, drawing closer to him. What do you think is down there, she murmured. Sky Watcher said that the Sky Clan medicine cats used to share tongues with their warrior ancestors in that cave. Firestar nodded. That's what I'm hoping. Every clan needs a special place, like the Moonstone, and this cave could be Sky Clans. It worries me that the new clan doesn't have a medicine cat yet. Maybe if we go into the cave tonight, Sky Clan's warrior ancestors will show us which cat to choose. Sandstorm's eyes gleamed. Good idea. We can't stay here forever, waiting for a medicine cat to show up. Firestar pushed away the feeling of homesickness that threatened to cloud his thoughts. This wasn't his clan, but he couldn't leave until he was sure they could survive without him, and finding a medicine cat was a big part of that. Sky Clan's warrior ancestors must be out there somewhere, he meowed, clawing at the sandy ground. When night had fallen, Firestar led his clan into the cave beneath the rocks. The moon was a thin claw scratch in the sky, and starlight dappled the surface of the river. Every clan member followed as he edged along the narrow path beside the water, all except Clovertail. She had stayed to look after her kits. She still refused to believe that there was anything in the cave, and had given Rock Kit, Bounce Kit, and Tiny Kit a good scolding for frightening every cat. Be careful, Firestar called, glancing back over his shoulder. Cherry paw, no fooling about. You could easily slip on these wet rocks, and we haven't got Clovertail to pull you out. There's something shining up ahead, a quavering voice came from somewhere behind Firestar. It sounded like Short Whisker. He was right. Firestar could see a pale light flowing from the cave, reflecting on the surface of the water. It's okay, he replied. It's not big scary cats, I promise. Setting his paws down carefully, he reached the flattened path that led along the side of the underground river and stood back to let the rest of the clan file inside. Sandstorm brought up the rear. See, she meowed, it's just moss. And it's beautiful, Firestar added. Look how the light ripples over the roof. The Sky Clan cats gazed around, their eyes reflecting the eerie light. Hey, Sharpclaw meowed. We're scary cats whose eyes glow like the moon. Leafdapple let out a row of amusement. 
Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw exchanged glances, looking ashamed for believing the kit's story. Skywatcher told us that your Sky Clan ancestors called this the Shining Cave, Firestar told them. It would have been a special place for them. But the Whispering Cave might be a better name, he thought. He strained to hear any message from Sky Clan's warrior ancestors, but all he could hear was the lap of the swift black water and the muse of his clanmates. What was special about it? Sharp Claw asked. Firestar gave each of the Sky Clan cats a searching glance before he replied. Skywatcher had told them that this cave was a special place for medicine cats, but Firestar didn't want to destroy their confidence by telling the new clan mates that they still needed a vitally important clan member before they could be a real clan. Instead, he watched to see if any cat could hear voices. To his disappointment, they were gazing warily around, respectful, but showing no sign of understanding the cave's deeper meaning. Not even Leaf Dapple, who had seemed sensitive enough to be a potential medicine cat. We'll find a use for the cave when it's needed, he told Sharp Claw, stifling a sigh. All in good time. The Ginger Tom gave Firestar a look from narrowed eyes, but said nothing more, only turning to lead the way along the ledge and out into the open again. Firestar waited until every other cat had left before listening one last time for the voices the kits had heard. The hair on his pelt began to rise. Perhaps, very faint and far away, there was something. But he couldn't be sure. How could he put the new clan in touch with the spirits of the former Sky Clan when he couldn't hear them either? Are you there? He mewed aloud hoping that Sky Clan's warrior ancestors could hear him. If you are, show yourselves to us. And for the new clan's sake, please send us a medicine cat. Chapter 27 Firestar sat at the edge of the sandy training area, watching Sandstorm working with Clovertail. Several days had passed since the pale brown she-cat had agreed to join the sessions. She was still anxious, still unsure about her place within the clan, but she was trying her best. She crouched with her tail lashing back and forth, her gaze fixed on Sandstorm. When the ginger she-cat sprang, Clovertail grabbed her and flipped her over to hold her down on the sand. Her three kits, watching beside Firestar, bounced up and down, letting out gleeful meows. Yes! Rock Kit yowled. Go, Clovertail! Bite her throat! Bounce Kit urged. Sandstorm pushed Clovertail off and glared at the three kits as she spat out a mouthful of sand. Do you mind? She meowed. You just wait until your apprentices. I'll teach you about throat biting. All three kits collapsed in morales of laughter, their tiny tails waving in the air. It's no use, Firestar twitched his ears at his mate. They know you're not as fierce as you sound. Sandstorm ignored him. You're coming along very well, she told Clovertail. You might want to watch out for- She broke off at the sound of yowling coming from farther down the gorge. Firestar sprang to his paws. He flicked his tail at Sandstorm. Come on, Clovertail, keep the kits here. Not waiting to see if Clovertail obeyed, he raced down the gorge. Sandstorm bounded at his heels. A heartbeat before they reached the rock pile, the yowling stopped. The silence was almost as frightening as the sound. Skidding around the lowest rocks of the rock pile, Firestar came to a slippery halt. A couple of tail lengths in front of him stood Rainfur, the gray rogue who had refused to join the clan. His sides heaved as he fought for breath. Patchfoot was facing him, his pelt bristling and his lips drawn back in a snarl. Leaf Dapple and Sharp Claw stood close by with their apprentices, looking ready to fight the intruder if they had to. Get out, Patchfoot rasped. You had the chance to stay, and you turned it down. Now go unless you want your fur clawed off. Wait, Firestar meowed, padding forward to push himself between Patchfoot and Rainfur. What's the problem? Rainfur knows he's not supposed to come here now, Patchfoot began. Firestar touched the black and white Tom's shoulder with his tail. Let Rainfur speak for himself. By this time, the gray rogue had gotten his breath back. I need your help, 
he meowed. Please, Firestar, it's not for me. It's for my mate and her kids. Until then, Firestar hadn't even known that Rainfur had a mate. What's the matter with them? Petal is a kitty pet, Rainfur explained. She lives downriver. He waved his tail toward the opposite side of the gorge. With an old two-leg who hardly ever feeds her. She used to sneak out to meet me, and I used to catch prey for her. I tried to persuade her to come and live with me, but she was scared, especially when she found out she had kits coming. She thought the two-leg would care for them. When he didn't care for her? Sandstorm asked, shocked. Rainfur shook his head helplessly. I couldn't persuade her, but now that the kits are born, the two-leg is just as bad, if not worse. Petal is getting weaker and weaker, and she hasn't enough milk to keep the kits alive. You've got to help us. Leaf Dapple glanced at Firestar. I think we should go. Just a moment. Without waiting for Firestar to answer, Sharpclaw stepped forward, giving Rain for a suspicious look. If your mate could sneak out to see you, why can't she sneak out now and bring the kits with her? To Firestar, he added, I think he might be setting a trap for us. Rainfur's neck fur began to bristle. Why would I want to do that? He meowed. She can't get out because the two-leg has blocked the gap she used. A shiver ran through him, and he clawed the ground in frustration. They're all going to die, and I don't know what to do. We'll come, Firestar decided. How many kits? Two, Rainfur replied, blinking in shocked relief. Okay, meowed Firestar. Sharpclaw, Leafdapple, Patchfoot, you come with me. That'll be enough to distract the two-leg and carry the kits out. Sandstorm, you're in charge until I get back. Fine, Sandstorm's tail curled up. Good luck, she added. Rainfur led the Skyclan patrol downstream and across the river by the tree trunk. They climbed the cliff and crossed the Skyclan border scent marks, still heading downstream. This was new territory to Firestar. He pricked his ears all his senses alert, but nothing disturbed the quiet of the woods. Eventually, Rainfur halted, raising his tail in warning. The two-leg nest is just beyond here, he explained, nodding toward a clump of brambles. We need to be careful the two-leg doesn't see us. He's thrown things at me before now. Firestar took the lead, creeping around the bramble thicket with his belly fur brushing the grass. He paused when the two-leg nest came in sight, scanning it carefully. A wooden fence surrounded it, but it was partly broken down, with bushes crowding up against it on both sides. Beyond it, the nest was dark and silent. Firestar could pick up strong scents of two-leg and cat, but he couldn't see any movement. Okay, come on, he murmured over his shoulder, but keep quiet. He crept forward again, following the two-leg fence until he came to a gap in the bottom where he slid into the garden. He found himself among thick bushes, so overgrown that hardly any sunlight penetrated their branches. Beyond them was a stretch of long, ragged grass leading up to the nest itself. Two-leg flowers edged the grass, but they were straggling and overgrown, not neat like in most two-leg gardens. Creepers were growing up the walls of the nest, and Firestar spotted a hole in the roof. It looked almost as derelict as the abandoned nest where he and Sandstorm had stayed on their way upriver. Two legs live here? Leaf Dapple whispered from beside Firestar's shoulder. That's where Petal is, Rainfur pointed with his tail toward a gap in the wall of the nest. Firestar heard a faint mewing and made out a pale blur behind the hard transparent stuff that filled the gap. There she is, Rainfur mewed. He shot past Firestar and leaped onto the ledge outside the hole in the wall. Idiot! Sharpclaw muttered, he'll get us all caught. But almost at once, Rainfur leaped down again and slunk back to rejoin the group, barely visible in the long grass. She wants to come with us, he reported, but we have to get her out first. Staying alert for any two-leg noise, Firestar turned to the rest of his patrol. Any ideas? Sharpclaw surveyed the nest with narrowed eyes. Maybe we should take a look around the other side. We need a way of getting in. But Rainfur said the two-leg keeps Petal shut up, Leaf Dapple pointed out. That suggests there won't be anywhere to get in or out. Then we have to make the two-leg open the door. 
Firestar glanced at each of his warriors in turn. Patchfoot looked blank, and Sharpclaw was tearing impatiently at the earth beneath his paws. Rainfur kept casting anxious glances back at the nest, while Leaf Dapple's eyes were thoughtful. Some cat will have to get in there, she mewed. If Petal's as weak as Rainfur says, she won't be able to carry the kits out. Firestar could think of a couple of ideas, but he wanted the Sky Clan cats to come up with their own solutions. They would never become independent if they relied on him for everything. What would fetch the two leg outside? He prompted. Fighting cats, Sharp Claw exclaimed. Rainfur, you said the two leg throws stuff at you if he sees you outside. He'll have to open a door to do that. Brilliant, Rainfur's eyes were gleaming. Then the rest of us can slip inside to help pedal. Firestar nodded. Right, Sharp Claw and Patchfoot, you do the fighting. Make as much noise as you like, but wait for my signal. Leaf Dapple and Rainfur, come with me. With the rogue and the tabby she-cat just behind him, Firestar slipped through the long grass until he stood below Petal. She was gazing out with her nose pressed to the shiny window. Rainfur jumped up beside her again and beckoned Firestar with his tail. Come on, he meowed. Tell her what she has to do. Motioning to Leaf Dapple to stay where she was, Firestar leaped up onto the ledge beside the rogue. Every hair on his pelt tingled with pity as he got a good look at Petal for the first time. Her pelt was such a pale gray that it was almost white, and she was so gaunt with hunger that Firestar could see every one of her ribs. Her blue eyes were wide and pleading. A bit of the transparent stuff had broken away, leaving a gap big enough for a cat to squeeze through, but it was blocked by a piece of wood, trapping Petal and the kits inside. Rainfur says you'll help my kits, Petal mewed, putting her mouth close to the edge of the wood. Firestar quickly told her what he and the other warriors had decided to do. Once the door is open, the three of us can get inside, he told her. We'll bring you and the kits out and join the others. Just be ready to run when I tell you. Petal nodded. I'm ready now. Okay, let's do it. Firestar jumped down into the grass again beside Leaf Dapple. As soon as Rainfur joined them, he waved his tail to where he could see Sharp Claw and Patchfoot crouching at the edge of the bushes. Immediately, Sharp Claw let out a fearsome screech. Patchfoot joined in with an eerie caterwauling. The two toms sprang at each other and rolled over together in the grass, their yowling and hissing growing louder and louder. A moment later, Firestar heard a two-leg voice coming from the nest, bellowing in rage. It's working, Leaf Dapple whispered. The door of the nest flew open. A two-leg emerged, his pelts tattered and his eyes bulging with fury. He had some two-leg things clutched in each hand. Still bellowing, he flung one of them at the battling cats. It flew over their heads and crashed into the bushes. Now, Firestar yowled. He led the other two cats along the wall of the nest until they reached the door and slipped inside. Firestar recognized the two-leg kitchen and drew his lips back at the stench of rotting two-leg food that rolled out to meet them. Rainfur flicked his tail toward an inside door that stood half open. This way! As Firestar followed him, he heard another thump from outside and an even louder screech. Star Clan, help us, he prayed, hoping that the two-leg hadn't managed to hit one of the warriors. Beyond the door was a small, dark den. Petal was crouching over a wooden nest beside the wall. A filthy two-leg pelt covered the bottom. On it lay a gray kit and a pale gray tabby, squirming and mewling helplessly. An empty bowl stood beside the nest, with traces of kitty pet food crusted inside and a couple of flies buzzing around it. Poor little scraps, Leaf Dapple exclaimed, bending over to nose the two kits gently. Are you sure it's safe? Petal asked, her eyes wide with fear. My two-leg will see us. Your two-leg has other things to think about, Rainfur told her. Come on. Petal gripped one of the kits in her jaws by the scruff, then stood up and headed for the door, staggering slightly. Give me the kit, Firestar directed. Leaf Dapple, you take the other one. Rainfur, help Petal. When he had the kit in a firm grip, he signaled with his tail for the others to follow him outside. But as they slipped out of the nest, 
A shadow blocked the light from the outer door. The two legs stood there, yowling and waving his four paws. Firestar flashed a glance at Leaf Dapple, and the two of them split apart, dodging past the two leg on either side. A huge, hairless pink paw swooped down on Firestar, but before it could grab him, Rainfur flung himself at the two leg, slashing the paw with his claws. The two leg let out a screech of pain. Looking back over his shoulder, Firestar caught a glimpse of Petal raking her claws down the two legs' hind leg. Firestar shot through the outer door into the garden. Setting down the kit, he signaled to Leaf Dapple to join the other warriors in the bushes. Then he whirled to join the fight, but Rainfur and Petal were already fleeing out of the nest behind him. Snatching up the kit again, he raced for the fence, where Sharpclaw was waiting beside the gap. He shoved Petal and Rainfur through to Leaf Dapple. By now, the two leg was lumbering across the garden toward them. Get a move on, Sharpclaw hissed. Firestar slipped through the gap. The ginger warrior followed, and the whole patrol pelted through the woods with the yowls of the two leg dying away behind them. They didn't stop until they had crossed the Sky Clan scent markers near the top of the cliff. For a few heartbeats, all the cats could do was catch their breath. Petal was leaning heavily on Rainfur's shoulder, but she staggered toward her kits as soon as Firestar and Leaf Dapple set them down. What if my two leg comes after us? She mewed anxiously. What if he tries to steal my kits back? We'll stop him, Rainfur promised, pressing his muzzle into her shoulder. We? Firestar thought, though he said nothing. Was Rainfur beginning to appreciate the support that he could expect from a clan? Petal sank down beside her kits and covered them with comforting licks. The kits burrowed into her pale belly fur, still mewing in distress as they tried to suckle. I haven't enough milk for them. Petal's eyes were filled with grief as she gazed up at Firestar. They're going to die. No, they're not, Firestar assured her. We'll take them back to our camp and look after them there. Clovertail still had milk, and she wouldn't refuse to help these pitiful scraps. Hope glimmered in the gray she-cat's eyes. Will you really? Oh, thank you. Leaf Dapple brushed gently against her pelt. You don't have to worry anymore. When they reached the camp, Sandstorm and the others were just returning from their training session. Cherry Paw and Sparrow Paw bounded up eagerly to see the kits with Clovertail's kits hard on their paws. You did it, Cherry Paw exclaimed. I wish we'd been there to help. It wasn't hard. Sharp Claw twitched his whiskers in satisfaction. You should have seen that stupid two-leg blundering about. Sandstorm approached the kits and gave each of them a gentle sniff. Her tail lashed furiously. Why did the two-leg want kitty pets if he treated them like this? It wasn't so bad before the kits came, Petal mewed. I could get out of the nest to catch mice, but once they were born, the two leg blocked the window. You don't have to explain, Clovertail thrust forward and touched noses with Petal. Bring them up to the nursery and I'll feed them. She turned to her own kits and gave them a hard stare. You three stay down here and let these kits sleep in peace for a bit, and don't get into mischief. What, us? Rock Kit stretched his eyes wide. Don't worry, Cherry Paw assured their mother. Sparrow Paw and I will keep an eye on them. Come on, you lot. She waved her tail to beckon the kits. We'll teach you the hunter's crouch. Their eyes sparkling with delight, Clovertail's three kits marched off after the apprentice, back up the gorge toward the training area. We're not the littlest anymore, Tiny Kit mewed gleefully. When they had gone, Clovertail led the way up to the nursery and settled down in her mossy nest. The cave was dim and cool, the boulder at the entrance blocking off most of the direct sunlight. Firestar and Leaf Dapple laid the two kits next to Clovertail's belly. Within a heartbeat, they were both suckling eagerly, pressed against her soft fur. Petal gazed at them as if she couldn't believe what she was seeing. I can't thank you enough, she whispered. She staggered as if her legs wouldn't hold her up any longer, and Leaf Dapple helped her to lie down in the soft moss next to Clovertail and her kits. They're beautiful kits, Clovertail murmured. What are their names? That's Mint, Petal replied. 
pointing with her ears at the gray kit. And that one is Sage, she added, indicating the pale gray tabby. I used to look through the window at the herbs in the two-leg garden. Mint kit and Sage kit, Firestar thought, wondering if Petal would want her kits to grow up in the clan. I'll fetch you some fresh kill, Leaf Dapple promised, and slipped out past the boulder at the entrance. Firestar said goodbye to the two she-cats and followed Leaf Dapple out. Sandstorm was waiting for him a few paw steps down the stony trail. Petal will need something to help her regain her strength, she murmured when Firestar joined her. She looks so weak and ill. Do you know what to do for her? Firestar asked. Juniper berries for strength, Cinderpelt said, the ginger she-cat replied. But I don't know where to find them. Her tail tip twitched. They need a medicine cat, don't they? Firestar shook his head. It's not for us to decide, he meowed. Medicine cats are chosen by Star Clan, and I haven't had any signs at all. Well, I wish Star Clan would get a move on, Sandstorm responded tartly. Meanwhile, I'll do what I can for Petal. I'll ask Sharpclaw if he knows where Juniper grows. She padded off to join the ginger rogue, who was crouched beside the fresh kill pile. Firestar spotted Rainfur a few fox lengths farther up the cliff outside the warrior's den. When Firestar climbed up to join him, he sprang to his paws. Will they be okay? They'll be fine, Firestar meowed, hoping that was true. Why don't you go and see? I will, if no cat minds, Rainfur gave his chest for a couple of embarrassed licks. Firestar guessed he felt awkward about entering the Sky Clan dens. You're welcome to stay here as long as you want, he mewed. Rainfur met his gaze steadily. Thanks, Firestar. I, we would have done the same for any cat. I wanted to say I'm sorry about what I said at the meeting, Rainfur meowed. And I'd like to stay with you, for a while at least. Petal's not strong enough to go anywhere yet and the kits need Clovertail to feed them. But only if that's okay, he added. Of course, we'll be glad to have you. Even while he welcomed Rainfur to the gorge, Firestar felt uneasy. The Grey Rogue was treating him as if he was Sky Clan's leader. He wasn't, and he didn't want to be. The sooner he could find a real leader, the better. Sharpclaw seemed the obvious choice. He was strong and brave, and his fighting skills were better than any other cat's. But he had looked too interested at the meeting when Firestar explained that a clan leader received nine lives. That was the wrong reason to look for clan leadership, because it could make a cat foolhardy about leaping into danger. Those lives were easily lost if not treated with respect. This isn't your choice, he reminded himself. A true clan leader should be approved by Star Clan. He looked up to where the sky was flooded with scarlet from the setting sun. It was still too early for the stars to show. Do you walk these skies? He silently asked Sky Clan's warrior ancestors. If you're there, please show me which is the right cat to lead this clan. Chapter 28 Cherry Paw crouched at the edge of the training area, her tail lashing from side to side and her eyes gleaming. Her tortoiseshell fur bristled as she sprang forward, her claws lashing at her mentor's shoulders. Sharp Claw dodged to one side, trying to hook the young she cat's paws from under her. She barreled into him, and both cats wrestled together in the sand. Well done, Firestar meowed. Cherry Paw, you've learned that move really well. Both cats sat up panting and shaking sand out of their pelts. Cherry Paw cast a triumphant glance at her mentor. I'll beat you one day, she told him. I hope you will, Sharp Claw replied calmly. My job will be done then. I think that's enough battle training for today, Firestar rose to his paws. Sharp Claw, when Sparrow Paw gets back from hunting patrol, I thought you and Leaf Dapple could give the two apprentices an assessment. What's that? Cherry Paul asked curiously. Your mentor gives you a task, Firestar explained. Usually to go and hunt in a particular place. Then they follow you and see how you get on. But you won't see them. In ThunderClan, every apprentice... 
He broke off at the sound of paw steps dashing along the gorge and a cat yowling his name. Spinning around, he caught sight of Sparrowpaw, his tabby fur bristling and his amber eyes wide with fear. We've been attacked, he gasped. Patchfoot's hurt. Show me, Firestar snapped. Sparrowpaw turned and raced back down the gorge. Firestar followed, with Sharp Claw and Cherry Paw hard on his paws. When he rounded the curve and passed the rock pile, Firestar saw Short Whisker and Sandstorm dragging Patchfoot down the lowest part of the trail to lay him in the shade of the cliff. His head hung limply and his tail dragged in the sand. Blood dripped from a wound in his shoulder. Firestar's belly lurched. When he padded up to Patchfoot's side, he saw that his chest was heaving with rapid, shallow breaths. His eyes were open, filled with pain and fear. What happened? Firestar asked, turning to Sandstorm. Sandstorm rested her tail reassuringly on Patchfoot's uninjured shoulder. Don't worry, she mewed. We'll fix you up as good as new. Giving her attention to Firestar, she went on. We were attacked by rats outside the abandoned two-leg barn. More rats than you've ever seen in your life, Short Whisker gasped. His fur was still fluffed out with shock. Icy claws pricked Firestar's spine. I knew there was something wrong with that place, he meowed. We fought them off, Sandstorm continued, but two of them jumped on Patchfoot. You were wounded yourself, Firestar pointed out, noticing a patch of fur matted with blood on her side. Sandstorm twitched her ears. That's nothing. I'll see to it when I've done what I can for Patchfoot. By this time, more of the cats had appeared. Leaf Dapple came down from the warrior's den, while Petal and Rainfur, who had been playing with their kits a little way down river, padded up and gazed anxiously at the wounded warrior. Will he die? Petal's voice quavered. Not if I can help it, Sandstorm replied. Cherrypaw, go to the Whispering Cave and get me some moss. Sparrowpaw, you go into some of the unused caves and bring me as many cobwebs as you can find. Sparrowpaw's whiskers quivered with surprise. Cobwebs? To stop the bleeding, Sandstorm flicked her tail at him. Hurry! Once the two apprentices had scurried off, Firestar and Leaf Dapple picked up Patchfoot and carried him to the lowest cave, which Skywatcher had told them once belonged to the clan's medicine cat. There was a large outer cave with some scrapes in the floor, and a smaller, deeper cave beyond it that would have been the medicine cat's den. In a niche in the rock, Sandstorm had discovered a few ancient, crumbled leaves, and the scent of sweet herbs seemed to hang in the air. Patchfoot let out a groan when his clanmates moved him, and by the time they laid him down in the medicine cat's cave, he had lost consciousness. Do you think you can help him? Firestar asked. Sandstorm's green eyes were anxious. I don't know. I can stop the bleeding with cobwebs, but I'm worried the wounds will get infected. Cinderpelt would use marigold or horsetail, but I don't know where they grow around here. I do. The voice was Petals. The pale gray cat had followed them and was looking in through the cave entrance. There's marigold in my two legs garden. Sandstorm spun around, hope gleaming in her green eyes. Can you get some? Petal flattened her ears. Firestar could see that she was trembling. How, how important is it? Very, Sandstorm replied. Petal straightened her shoulders. Then I'll go fetch some. Oh no, you won't, Rainfur appeared beside Petal. I'll go, I know where the marigold grows. He gave Petal's ear a lick. You look after the kits, and I'll be back before you know it. That would be great. Firestar meowed. Rainfur darted off, and Firestar padded over to Petal. Thanks for offering, but you shouldn't have to go back to that two-leg nest again. Petal looked up at him, her eyes wide with guilt. Sometimes I think I should have stayed with my two-leg, she murmured. But I can't bear even to think about him. You don't have to, Firestar told her. You're safe here. Petal dipped her head and went out, calling to her kits. Sandstorm crouched down beside Patchfoot and began to clean the blood from his shoulder wound with strong rasps of her tongue. Firestar watched her for a couple of heartbeats, then went back outside, passing Cherry Paw as she entered with a huge bundle of moss. The rest of the clan was gathered around Short Whisker, listening to his account of the rat attack. And then they poured out of the barn as thick as a river, he meowed. 
You couldn't see the ground for rats. That's enough. Firestar stepped forward and silenced the tabu warrior with a flick of his tail. The clan was shocked enough by Patchfoot's injuries without hearing exaggerated stories of how he came by them. I've dealt with rats before, he went on. They're nasty creatures, but a strong patrol of cats can beat them. Sharp Claw, you can come with me, and Cherry Paw. He waved the apprentice over as she reappeared from the medicine cat's cave. We'll go and check this out for ourselves. Aren't you glad you practiced those fighting moves? Sharpclaw muttered to his apprentice. Cherry Paw's only reply was an enthusiastic wave of her tail. Her eyes were gleaming with excitement. Leaf Dapple, you're in charge of the camp while we're away. If I were you, I would get all the kits inside the nursery with Clover Tail and then guard the entrance, just in case. The tabby she cat dipped her head. Don't worry, Firestar. We'll be fine. She bounded off to round up the kits. Firestar took a last look at the camp, then led the way up the stony trails to the top of the cliff. There was no scent of rats here, just the hot reek of Patchfoot's blood. But he ordered the patrol to keep silent and crept as stealthily as he could through the undergrowth and across the scrub land toward the two-legged barn. Long before he reached it, he began to pick up a strong rat scent. And as he and his patrol drew closer, the sense of a malevolent force, of cold eyes watching him from the shadows, swept over him again. Firestar shivered to the roots of his pelt. Rats. That was what he had sensed in the undergrowth downstream. Rats whose hatred of cats spilled out like a dark poisonous river. He was surprised at the strength of that hatred and how focused it was. The rats he had met before had been vicious, but not like this, purposeful and cunning. Everything was quiet as the Sky Clan patrol approached the shiny fence that surrounded the barn. The ragged holes in the walls seemed to stare at them, but except for the scent, there was no sign of a rat. Firestar, over here! Sharpclaw was sniffing a little farther along the fence, beckoning his leader with his tail. When he joined the Ginger Tom, Firestar saw the ground torn up by claws and patches of soil still darkened by clots of blood. This must be where the attack happened, Sharpclaw mewed. Firestar nodded. Just beyond the clawed up area was a gap at the bottom of the shiny fence, big enough for a cat to squeeze through. For a heartbeat, his paws froze to the ground. Then he gave his pelt a shake. This was just a gang of rats. Nothing that he couldn't cope with, as long as he had strong warriors to back him up. Okay, he murmured. We're going in. Cherry Paw, follow me. Sharp Claw, keep a lookout behind. Ears pricked and whiskers twitching, he slid through the gap and padded softly across the white stone surface toward the barn. There was still no sign of movement. Firestar would have liked to think that Sandstorm's patrol had frightened the rats off, if it weren't for that overwhelming sensation of being watched. Are we going inside? Sharpclaw asked. Not if we don't have to, Firestar replied. They can do what they like on their own territory. We'll just take a look around outside and then... He broke off, every hair on his pelt rising in horror. With a patter of tiny paws, rats had begun pouring out of one of the holes in the walls of the barn. More rats than he had seen in his life, more than he could have imagined living in one barn. Whipping around, he saw yet more emerging from another hole. The two streams flowed around the three cats, a whispering torrent of brown bodies and long, thin tails. None of them squeaked. There was just the small, terrible sound of their scampering feet as they moved steadily, purposefully into position. Firestar and his patrol were surrounded. An unbroken mass of rats stood a tail length away from them, blocking the route to the gap in the fence. Their tiny glittering eyes were filled with malice. Short Whisker didn't exaggerate, Firestar thought in horror. You really can't see the ground for rats. Sharp Claw had dropped into a crouch, ready to spring, his teeth drawn back in a snarl. Firestar stood beside him, flicking a glance at Cherry Paw. The young tortoiseshell's eyes were glazed with terror, but she was facing her enemies and trying to stand firm, even though her legs were trembling. 
Okay, Firestar murmured. When I raise my tail, head for the fence. Sharp Claw acknowledged the order with a lash of his tail. Firestar tensed, ready to give the signal, and wished he could have said goodbye to Sandstorm. But before he could move, the mass of rats parted, and a single rat stepped out into the gap between them and the cats. It was bigger than most of the others, with a wiry, muscular body and curving yellow teeth. Fine, Sharp Claw growled. You want to die first, do you? The rat's wedge-shaped head swung back and forth as its malignant gaze flicked from cat to cat. And it began to speak. To Firestar's astonishment, he could understand what it said, though the words were so twisted it was hard to make them out. Rats not die, its voice grated like a claw dragged over stone. Cats die. Sharp Claw slid his claws out. You're sure of that, are you? Leave, the rat went on. All cats, leave. We killed you before. Now we kill you again. You killed us before? Firestar exclaimed. This time we let black and white cat live. The rat's eyes glittered with hatred. But only this time. You stay by river, you die. It kinked its tail over its back. And as if they had been waiting for the signal, the other rats separated into two streams again and flowed back into the barn. The rat who had spoken slid in among them and was lost to sight. Firestar flicked his tail toward the gap. Go! While Cherrypaw and Sharpclaw squeezed out into the scrubland, Firestar turned to face the barn. His heart was thumping hard enough to break out of his chest. The gorge is our place, he yelled after the river of retreating bodies. We will not leave. Then he spun around, slid through the gap, and raced across the open ground with Cherrypaw and Sharpclaw by his side. They didn't stop until they reached the shelter of the bushes at the top of the cliff. I've never seen so many rats, Jerry Paul panted, her eyes wide. Nor have I, Firestar admitted. And I've never come across a rat who could speak to cats before. Sharpclaw was giving himself a quick grooming, as if he was trying to hide how troubled he was. I've never met one, but I've heard of rats like that. Rats who could think and plan and hate. My mother used to tell me stories, and I thought that's all they were, just stories. I wish they were, Firestar's alarm was growing. He said, we killed you before. I've got a horrible feeling I know what he meant. What? Cherry Paw asked. Firestar wasn't ready to reply. There was something he needed to check. Waving his tail for the others to follow, he pushed through the bushes to the cliff top and down the trail as far as the warrior's den. Look at that, he mewed pointing with his tail to the scratches on the column of rock by the entrance. Yes, our ancestors' claw marks, Sharp Claw nodded. Look at the smaller claw marks at the bottom, the ones that go across instead of up and down. I always assumed that Kits made them, but now I think they're the marks of rats. Peering more closely at the marks, Firestar matched them in his memory with the tiny claws of rats. No kit would have claws so thorn sharp. Cherry Paw's eyes stretched wide. Rats came here? Firestar nodded. We've always known that something drove the first Sky Clan cats out of here and scattered them so that the clan was destroyed. Now I think we know what that something was. Rats! Sharp Claw snarled. Rats, Firestar agreed. Gazing down at the thin claw marks, scored across the ones made by cats, Firestar found it was easy to imagine hordes of rats pouring into the gorge and overwhelming the Sky Clan warriors. They had set their marks in this cave to proclaim their victory. Firestar had no doubt that he was looking at a record of Sky Clan's defeat.
This was the secret that Skywatcher had refused to tell him, the secret of how the first Sky Clan had been driven from the gorge. The rat's hatred had been passed down, and now it was being nourished by the leader Firestar and his patrol had met outside the barn, the rat who spoke cat, who must have learned to speak the language of his enemies to let them know exactly what he would do to them. He would stop at nothing to rid his territory of cats, just as his ancestors had done long ago. Firestar worked his claws in the sandy floor. Were Sky Clan doomed to be driven out of their homes again, just as their ancestors had been? He padded out of the den and gazed across the gorge. Clouds covered the sky, though there was a pale gleam of light where the sun was trying to break through. Slowly, the clouds shifted into a pattern of light and dark, until the Sky Clan ancestor's face was looking down at him with eyes full of wisdom. Firestar's paws seemed to freeze to the rock, and every hair on his pelt tingled. Why should the Sky Clan ancestor appear now, when Firestar had not seen him for so long? Somehow Firestar was convinced it must be because there was a way to defeat the rats and save the clan. The clouds shifted again, and the face of the ancestor disappeared but the encouragement he had given Firestar flowed through his body from ears to tail tip. Come on, he meowed, glancing over his shoulder at Sharp Claw. I'm going to call a clan meeting. Cats of Sky Clan. Firestar stood on top of the rock pile, his flame-colored pelt gleaming in a shaft of sunshine. You heard what happened today. First to Sandstorm's patrol, and then when I went back with Sharp Claw and Cherry Paw. Now we have to decide what we're going to do. Pausing, he let his gaze travel over the clan below. All the cats were sitting close to one another, as if they needed the physical support of their clanmates. Petal was missing, looking after the kits in the nursery cave. But Rainfur was here, even though he wasn't a clan warrior. Sandstorm was sitting at the mouth of the medicine cat's den, where she could keep an eye on Patchfoot and still listen to what was being said at the meeting. Can we do anything? Leaf Dapple asked. If there are as many rats as you say, how can we possibly beat them? Her eyes met Firestar's as she spoke. She wasn't frightened or despairing, but Firestar could tell she saw no point in facing a battle they couldn't win. He knew he had to be honest with her. It's going to be tough. I've never come across rats like these before. But we don't have to kill them all, just enough to make them stay in their own territory. They drove out the first Sky Clan, Sparrowpaw mewed nervously. Why should we be any different? Short Whisker murmured agreement, his whiskers twitching. At least we know what we have to face, Firestar replied. He scraped his claws along the rock desperate to turn this huddle of shaken cats into a clan of loyal, determined warriors. Your warrior ancestors are watching you now, he told them, hoping it was true. You should fight for their sakes, not just your own. This is your chance to take revenge. Why, Cherry Paw demanded. We've never met our warrior ancestors. Okay, we're living in their camp, but that doesn't mean we have to fight their battles. Clovertail nodded, taking a paw step that brought her to the young tortoiseshell's side. Cherry Paw is right. We've got to decide what's right for us, not for some dead cats who already lost their battle. Firestar winced. Clovertail's words were harsh, but she had a point. And what about the kits? Short Whisker fretted. They can't fight, but the rats will kill them if they come here. Rainfur bared his teeth. Over my dead body, Firestar gazed frustratedly down at them. Short Whisker obviously didn't understand the warrior code that would protect the weakest members of the clan above all else, and Rainfur didn't seem to realize that he could rely on the clan for help. Before he could speak again, Sharp Claw stepped forward. What are you, warriors or mice? Are you going to let prey beat you? I'll fight to the death if necessary. And as often as I have to, he added, with a dark look at Firestar. 
Firestar tensed. Sharpclaw couldn't have given a more obvious hint that he expected to be chosen as clan leader. But at least he seemed to have shaken off some of the despondency that had settled over the clan like a clinging fog. There's no point in every warrior fighting to the death, Firestar pointed out quietly. Then there would be no clan left to fight for. But think about this, he went on. If you don't want to fight for your warrior ancestors, then how about fighting for yourselves? You've achieved so much, making a home here, rescuing Petal and her kits. Isn't that worth fighting for? His heartbeat quickened when he saw that he was reaching them at last. This is a good home for you, he meowed, waving his tail to take in the river and the caves of the camp. You've all worked hard for it, and you deserve to be here. Are you going to let the rats drive you out? No, we're staying, Sharpclaw hissed, and we'll tear the throats out of any rats who try to stop us. Yes, Cherrypaw screeched, springing forward. We'll fight! Sparrowpaw jumped up to stand beside them, and the rest of the clan yelled in agreement. We'll fight! Firestar gazed over their heads to where Sandstorm was still sitting outside the medicine cat's den. Their eyes met. Oh, Star Clan, Firestar thought. I hope I'm not leading them to their deaths. Chapter 29 How is Patchfoot? Firestar asked, as he slipped into the medicine cat's cave. Night had fallen, and the half moon shed silver light into the gorge. Back in the forest, the medicine cats would be traveling to High Stones for their twice moon meeting. Firestar wished he had the benefit of Cinderpelt's wisdom now. Sandstorm looked up as Firestar entered, her eyes filled with sorrow. He's getting worse, she mewed. His wound is infected. Just what I was afraid of. You've tried Marigold? Firestar asked, patting forward to look down at Patchfoot. The black and white warrior shifted restlessly in his sleep and let out a moan of pain. Sandstorm nodded. Petal and Rainfur brought me plenty, but it's not doing any good. I wish there was something stronger to use for rat bites, but if there is, Cinderpelt didn't tell me. She lashed her tail in frustration. You couldn't learn everything in the time you had before we left, Firestar consoled her. I know you're doing your best. It's a pretty poor best if Patchfoot dies. Firestar wanted to reassure her, but he knew the words would sound empty. He could feel the heat of fever rising from Patchfoot's body. His legs twitched as Firestar watched. He opened eyes glazed with pain and let out another moan. Sandstorm rested her tail tip soothingly on his head. The black and white Tom's eyes closed again and he seemed to sink back into a quieter sleep. He can't go on like this, Sandstorm murmured. No cat has the strength. Firestar rasped his tongue over her ear, but before he could say anything to comfort her, he heard a soft paw step behind him. A sweet scent drifted around him, and every hair on his pelt started to tingle. Spotted leaf. Spinning around, he saw the pale outline of a tortoise shell cat with the frosty glimmer of Star Clan around her. She set down a mouthful of herbs and padded up to settle close by Patchfoot, between Firestar and Sandstorm. Am I dreaming? Firestar wondered. When did I fall asleep? Then Sandstorm's ears pricked. She turned, and her eyes flew wide with astonishment. Spotted leaf! Firestar opened his jaws to speak, but at first, not the faintest mew came out. How could Sandstorm see Spotted Leaf if she was inside his dream? Spotted Leaf, how? Spotted Leaf silenced him by touching noses with him. I've come because you both need me. She turned to the herbs she had set down and patted them over to Sandstorm. Burdock root is best for rat bites. Sandstorm was staring at the Star Clan medicine cat, as if she couldn't believe what she was seeing. 
As the glossy green leaves rustled around her paws, she blinked and looked down, sniffing the roots. This will help, Patchfoot? Spotted Leaf nodded. I'll chew the root up. You clean the marigold off his wound. As if she had made up her mind not to think too closely about what was happening, Sandstorm began licking the chewed up marigold from Patchfoot's shoulder. Firestar watched numbly as Spotted Leaf crouched down beside the burdock, tucked her paws underneath her chest, and began to chew one of the roots. When the pulp was ready, she showed Sandstorm how to use it, patting it well down into the wound. Patchfoot stirred uneasily. Spotted Leaf bent over him. Sleep now, she whispered into his ear. All will be well, I promise. As if he could hear her, Patchfoot sighed and seemed to settle more quietly. Sandstorm blinked anxiously. Will he really get better now? Spotted Leaf nodded. Just keep putting the root on his shoulder. You'll find more in the wood by the stream that marks the boundary. Show the leaves to your warriors, then they'll know what to look for. Thank you, Spotted Leaf, Firestar meowed. Brushing his pelt against the medicine cats, he added, I didn't know you could come so far to help us. I haven't seen you since we left the forest. Too late, he realized that Sandstorm was bristling beside him. You mean you've seen Spotted Leaf before? Firestar faced her to see anger and hurt in her green eyes. Spotted Leaf visits me in dreams. She helps me. You never told me. Firestar's belly churned with guilt. He knew how insecure Sandstorm felt when she thought about Spotted Leaf, knowing the connection she had shared with Firestar when she had been ThunderClan's medicine cat. But he had never felt that he was betraying her by meeting Spotted Leaf in his dreams. Before he could reply, Spotted Leaf slipped between the two of them and laid her tail tip gently on Sandstorm's shoulder. Peace, dear one, she murmured. Firestar loves you. He loves you more. Sandstorm's voice was choked. Spotted Leaf hesitated, her amber eyes warm as she gazed at the ginger she-cat. That's not true. Firestar and I never discovered what we might have meant to each other. She mewed at last. I was alive in the forest for such a short time after he came to ThunderClan. But I know for sure, her voice grew more intense, that he and I could never have been mates. I was and always will be a medicine cat. That comes first, more than any cat who walks the forest, more even than Firestar. Sandstorm searched the tortoiseshell cat's face. Is that really true? Of course, Spotted Leaf purred. Even now I'm a medicine cat, not for my clan mates in Star Clan, but for all the cats in the forest below. I love you, Sandstorm, Firestar put in. You'll never be second best for me. My love for you belongs here and now in the life we share and it will last for all the moons to come. I promise. Sandstorm looked from Spotted Leaf to Firestar and back again. At last, she took a long breath. Thank you, Spotted Leaf. I've never stopped thinking about how you and Firestar seemed to belong together when he first came to the forest. But I understand better now. I thought you always knew how I felt about you, Firestar mewed, bewildered. Sandstorm blinked at him. Even though her eyes were full of love, there was a trace of exasperation there, too. Firestar, you can be so dense. Spotted Leaf dipped her head. I must go, but we will meet again, I promise. Until then, may Star Clan light your path. Goodbye, and thank you. Not just for the burdock root, Firestar meowed. The tortoiseshell she-cat padded toward the cave entrance and paused for a heartbeat, her pelt brushing against his. Too softly for Sandstorm to hear, she murmured, Sometimes I would give anything for things to be different. She did not wait for a reply. The moonlight had faded. 
For a heartbeat, her slender shape was outlined against the first pale light of dawn from the sky above the far side of the gorge. Then she was gone. Sandstorm shook her head. Have I been dreaming? Or did that really happen? Firestar stepped to her side and pressed his muzzle against her shoulder. It really happened. I can't believe she came to help us. There'll never be another cat in the forest like her. But she's not you, Sandstorm. Sandstorm turned to gaze at him. No more secrets, Firestar. I promise to try to understand how important Spotted Leaf is to you. But I need to be able to trust you. You can, Firestar vowed. Patchfoot let out a sigh, distracting Firestar from the depths of Sandstorm's green eyes. The black and white warrior was quieter now, his breathing easier. He seemed to be sleeping more deeply. He's going to be all right, Firestar mewed. And I think the rest of the clan will be too. We'll start extra battle training right away. Firestar stood at the bottom of the rock pile, with the Sky Clan cats clustered around him. The sun had risen over the clifftop, casting long shadows down into the gorge. We need to be as strong as possible when we go out to fight the rats. Sandstorm stood beside him. Since Spotted Leaf's visit earlier that morning, Patchfoot had improved so much that she had told Firestar she could leave him for a while to come to this meeting. Don't wait too long she advised with a twitch of her ears. Otherwise the rats will come and we won't be ready for them. Firestar knew she was right. I want a permanent watch on the Sky Rock. We should send extra patrols out to the two-leg barn too, Leaf Dapple suggested. Firestar nodded. Right, but not too close. I don't want to fight until we're ready. I'll sort out the patrols, Sandstorm meowed. And the training schedules. Watches and extra patrols and battle training? Cherry Paw's eyes were wide with dismay. It sounds like really hard work. You'd rather have your throat torn out by a rat? Sharp Claw flicked his tail over the young tortoise shell's ear, and she sprang back with an indignant hiss. My apprentice will do as she's told, and do it without complaining. Cherry Paw opened her jaws to protest, but Firestar silenced her with a flick of his ears. We can get started, he meowed, unless you have any other suggestions. Rainfur rose to his paws. Petal and I want to be trained as well. That's right. Petal looked nervous to be speaking in front of the whole clan. The kits are too small for us to leave yet, and we want to be ready to defend ourselves. Thank you, Firestar dipped his head. We're glad to have you. Sandstorm will add you to the training schedule. Either Clovertail or I must stay with the kits, Petal pointed out. Don't worry, Sandstorm replied. I'll work around that. Are there any more questions? Right, she went on when no cat responded. Leaf Dapple and Sharp Claw, you can be the first patrol. Cherry Paw, will you keep watch on the Sky Rock? Give me a few moments to check on Patchfoot, and then I'll lead a training session with Sparrow Paw and Rain Fur. And Petal? You can join us as Clovertails with the kits right now. What about me? Short Whisker asked. You can come with me on a hunting patrol, Firestar replied. We'll need all the fresh kill we can get to keep our strength up. One more thing, he added before the cats split up for their duties. No cat leaves the camp alone from now on, and every cat must stay alert. If the rats come, they'll find us ready and waiting. He dismissed the meeting with a wave of his tail. Sharp Claw and Leaf Dapple sprang up the rocks toward the top of the cliff, and Cherry Paw followed, taking the trail that led to the Sky Rock. Petal, Rainfur, and Sparrow Paw made their way up the gorge toward the training area. Asking Short Whisker to wait for him, Firestar padded beside Sandstorm as she headed for the Medicine Cat's cave. You know, Cherry Paw was right, he meowed. It will be hard work. We don't have enough cats to prepare for a rat attack as well as all the regular duties, he sighed. I'd give my pelt to have a patrol of ThunderClan warriors here now. Well, you can't, 
Sandstorm rasped her tongue over his ear. But don't worry, you'll find a way. You defeated Scourge, and you'll defeat these rats. Firestar wished he shared her confidence. At least Spotted Leaf told us what to do for Patchfoot. True, Sandstorm replied. But it just goes to show how much we need a medicine cat. Medicine cats are born, not made. And I've yet to see any Sky Clan cat show any connection with their warrior ancestors. None of them heard anything when they went into the Whispering Cave. We should have a cat who knows about herbs and can treat injuries at least, Sandstorm pointed out, with an impatient twitch of her tail. I could teach one of them what I know. It would be a start. Firestar paused on the trail just below the entrance to the medicine cat's den. Sharpclaw wouldn't do, he mused. He's far too good a warrior. Clovertail has kits. What about Shortwhisker? Sandstorm shook her head. He froze at the sight of blood when Patchfoot was injured. Leafed apple then? Maybe, Sandstorm mused. She cares about weaker cats. I know, Firestar decided. If Spotted Leaf visits me, I can ask her. Sandstorm glanced away for a moment, then faced him again. Yes, that's a good idea, she murmured. Firestar curled up in the warrior's den, his legs aching and his head spinning with tiredness. Three days had passed since he had organized the new schedule of patrols and training, and every cat had been on their paws from dawn to sunset. That morning, he had led a patrol to the two-leg barn, then spent the rest of the day hunting. The moon was already climbing the sky before he had the chance to sleep, and he would have to wake later to take his turn watching on the sky rock. How long can we keep this up? No sooner had Firestar closed his eyes than he found himself standing on the sky rock. The moon floated high above his head, and silver pelt glittered across the sky. The night was silent, except for the rushing of the river far below. It's not time for my watch yet, Firestar thought confusedly. Greetings, a voice spoke behind him, and Firestar spun around to see a cat standing on the very edge of the sky rock. His thick gray fur was turned to silver by the moonlight, and his eyes shone like pale flames. Frosty starlight glimmered around his paws. Something about the cat was familiar. Firestar's first thought was that he was the Sky Clan ancestor who had been haunting him. Then he caught his breath as he picked up a trace of familiar scent. Sky Watcher! The Star Clan cat dipped his head. It's good to see you again, Firestar. Come on, Sky Watcher went on, proving that he had lost none of his sharp tongue. Don't stand there with your mouth open. We haven't got all night. Firestar made an effort to pull himself together. Why have you come? Sky Clan stands at a fork in the path, Skywatcher replied. Danger is very near. You mean the rats? They're what destroyed the first Sky Clan, aren't they? Why didn't you tell me about them? Skywatcher sat down and steadily met Firestar's gaze. What good would that have done? It would have been wrong to tell you if it made you give up. And how would it have helped you to know about Sky Clan's old enemies before they attacked? Now you have a clan of strong warriors to stand against them. But are they strong enough? Firestar murmured. They must be ready to defend themselves, Skywatcher replied. Perhaps you should see these rats as the first challenge for the clan to overcome. They will be even stronger afterward. Firestar nodded. The Star Clan cat was right, and yet he wondered how the clan could be stronger if all its warriors were dead. Thinking about death reminded him that so far the clan had no way of making contact with their warrior ancestors. Can you tell me if Sky Clan has a medicine cat yet? He asked. No clan can survive long without one. What about Leaf Dapple? Skywatcher twitched his ears. No. That is not Leaf Dapple's destiny. But we must have a medicine cat. 
Even now your medicine cat's paws are on the path that will lead her to you, Skywatcher told him. But you must look farther than the cats of Sky Clan. There is a cat who dreams of her warrior ancestors, but she has not heard of the new clan. So I have to go and find her? Firestar felt a tingle of excitement in his paws. Where is she? But Skywatcher did not reply. Rising to his paws, he swept his tail around in a gesture of farewell and leaped from the edge of the rock into the sky. Firestar bit back a yowl of alarm. Any living cat who tried that would have crashed down onto the rocks below. Instead, Skywatcher's body dissolved mid-leap, leaving behind a faint glittering dust that faded as Firestar watched. A heartbeat later, he opened his eyes inside the warrior's den, with Short Whisker prodding him to wake up and go to the Sky Rock. Sparrowpaw, you can be excused from battle training this morning, Firestar announced. I want you for a special mission. Young Tabby Tom's eyes gleamed with excitement. What mission? I have to go to the two-leg place, and I need a cat who knows his way around. Quickly, he explained to Sparrowpaw what Skywatcher had told him in his dream. Though Skywatcher hadn't said that the new medicine cat lived among two legs, Firestar thought it was most likely. Sharp Claw and Leaf Dapple hadn't told him about any other rogues living in the forest, and he couldn't look farther afield because that would mean leaving Sky Clan to face the rats without him. Not long ago, they would have raced across the scrubland toward the two leg place. Now they crept along, slinking from one patch of cover to the next all their senses alert for any trace of rats. Firestar remembered how he had felt when the dog pack roamed the forest. It went against everything in the warrior code when cats were forced to behave like prey. Clouds scudded across the sky, driven by a cold wind. Leaves whirled in the air. The warmth of green leaf would soon be no more than a memory. How would the clan cope, Firestar wondered through the harsh days of Leaf Bear, if they still had to guard against invasion from the rats. I hate this, Sparrowpaw hissed, as they crouched behind a gorse bush, spying out the next stage of their journey. This waiting, it spooks me. Why don't the rats just attack and get it over with? What are they waiting for? I can't be sure, Firestar flexed his claws but I'd guess the rats know exactly how unsettled we are by waiting. They think they're going to win whenever they attack, so they've nothing to lose by making us suffer. He didn't add that the longer they waited, the more tired the clan would become. Any cat could see that. The rats probably knew it too. They were more clever than any rats he had ever known. Firestar's respect for them was growing every day, but that only made him hate them all the more. He would have led a patrol to fight the rats on their own territory, to attack them first and win the advantage of surprise, but for one thing. Sky Clan didn't have a medicine cat to heal their wounds or read the signs from Star Clan. Let's keep going, he muttered. As they paused in the shelter of the fence that surrounded the first two leg gardens, Sparrow Paul peered through a gap with a trace of sadness in his eyes. That's where Cherry Paw and I used to live, he murmured. Defensively, he added. It's not that I want to go back. I know, Firestar reassured him. Two legs aren't our enemies, even if they don't understand the warrior's way of life. Now and then, I miss my old two legs. You do? Sparrowpaw's eyes widened. Firestar nodded. They were good to me, but I was born for the life of a warrior. Sparrowpaw straightened up. Pride replaced the sadness in his eyes. So was I. My two legs have a new cat now, Firestar went on. Her name's Hattie. She seems nice, much better suited to living with housefolk than I was. For a heartbeat, Sparrowpaw looked alarmed at the thought of another cat taking his place. Then he gave his chest fur a couple of quick licks. I hope my house folk get another cat too, he mewed bravely. Then they wouldn't be sad anymore about losing me and Cherry Paw.
Firestar rested the tip of his tail on the young cat's shoulder. Come on, we have a cat to find. He felt his bristling pelt relax a little as he and Sparrowpaw slipped down the first alley that led into the heart of the two-legged place. Two legs and dogs he had dealt with before, and here among the two-legged nests, they were less likely to encounter the clever, cold-hearted rats. Sparrowpaw, however, looked much less at ease than he had when he and Firestar had last visited the two-legged place. His pelt fluffed up at the distant barking of a dog, and when they emerged from the alley onto the edge of a small thunderpath, he leaped into the air as a glittering monster snarled past. I guess I've forgotten what it's like around here, he mewed, giving his shoulder an embarrassed lick. After carefully checking that no more monsters were around, Firestar led the way down another alley, to be met at once by a powerful scent of cat. Well, look who's here, a voice drawled. Sparrowpaw jumped, his pelt bristling again. Firestar looked up to see the black kitty pet, Oscar, stretched out on the top of the wall. His jaws gaped in a yawn, showing sharp teeth. If it isn't the mad rogue, he sneered with a dismissive twitch of his whiskers at Firestar. And little Boris. Actually, I've been expecting you, he added. But I thought you'd come a bit sooner than this. Firestar froze. Surely Oscar couldn't be the medicine cat Skywatcher had told him of. The black tomcat leaped lightly down from the wall and confronted them. Crawling back to your house, folk, are you? Now the weather's turning cold? No, I am not, Sparrowpaw glared at the black tom. I'm going to be a warrior. And don't call me Boris, I'm Sparrowpaw now. Oscar let out a snort of amusement. Sparrowpaw, what sort of name is that? It's my name. Sparrowpaw slid his claws out. Do you want to make something of it? Hastily, Firestar thrust himself between the two bristling toms. We're not here to fight, he meowed, though privately he would have liked to see the battle-trained Sky Clan apprentice show Oscar just how much he had learned in the past moon. We're looking for a special cat, he went on to Oscar. One who has weird dreams. Have you heard about a cat like that? Please, Skywatcher. He added silently, don't let Oscar tell me that he dreams about you. Oscar's green eyes widened, gleaming with contempt. No, he replied, and I haven't heard about any cats who fly either. You think you know everything you, Sparrowpaw began hotly. I think you are looking for me, another voice interrupted him from behind, clear and young. My name is Echo. I dream of cats with stars in their fur.